Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I did a demo review video of the newly released DxO Pure Raw 3. After that video posted, a couple people commented that they would like to see me do a video comparing DxO Pure Raw 2 to DxO Pure Raw 3 because they were wondering if it was worth upgrading because DxO Pure Raw 3 is a paid upgrade. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to take this raw file. You can see it was shot with an ISO of 12,800. And if I zoom in, there is a considerable amount of noise. We're going to send it first into DxO Pure Raw 2. Then we're going to send it into DxO Pure Raw 3. And then we're going to compare the results. Now this is an unedited raw file. I haven't done anything to it at all. Now I'm going to use these apps as plugins in Lightroom. They also work as standalone apps. The only reason why I'm using them as plugins in Lightroom for this demonstration is because it's just easier to show you the results from within Lightroom. So without further ado, let's send this image into DxO Pure Raw 2. Now, neither of these apps work as the typical Lightroom plugin in that you would right click on the image, go down to edit in, and then over to the plugin. They don't work that way. To get this into DxO Pure Raw 2, what you need to do is go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, then over and down to Process with DxO Pure Raw 2. When you do that, you'll get this dialog box with some options to choose from. First of all, the raw processing method. You have three to choose from, HQ Prime and D Prime. D prime only works on raw files and D prime is probably the best choice for all raw files. I'm sure there, I shouldn't say all because there might be a raw file here or there where prime or HQ would work better. But from my experience, if you have a raw file, use the D prime raw processing method. And that's what we're going to do here. I am going to allow uh, pure raw to to do global lens sharpening and lens distortion correction. So I'm going to have both those checked. I'm going to output it to a DNG. I like to preserve the raw format as much through my workflow as possible. Destination folder. I'm going to save it to a custom folder, which is actually the same exact folder that the image is in already. So I'm going to save the the new image there as well. And I'm not going to do any file renaming at all. I'm just going to let it do its default renaming. I'm not going to override that. And then all I need to do is click process. Now this works in the background. You actually can go in Lightroom and do other things in Lightroom, but it, it's pretty fast. Now what it's supposed to do now is save that image in the same folder I had the original image in. If I go over to my library module Lightroom, that is the working folder. So that image, it's done already. That image is in this folder. But what it's supposed to do, and it only does it half of the time, is it will automatically import it into Lightroom and it will automatically put it in a collection. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it does it within a second. And then sometimes it doesn't do it at all. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen here. Uh, it did it. See, it just took a while. And it put it in its own collection. It's called DxO Pure Raw 2, and there it is right there. But it is in that original folder. So let's go back up to that original folder. And this is the image here, and this is the original raw file. We're not going to compare anything yet, okay? Uh, but what I am going to do is rename this so we don't get confused between it and the, the version that I'll send into DxO's Pure Raw 3. So to rename it in Lightroom, you just hit the F2 key, and I'm going to call this Pure, Pure Raw 2, just like that, okay? And we'll click OK. So now you can see this is the Pure Raw 2.dng. Go back to our original raw file. Now we're going to send this into Pure Raw 3, and it's done in the same manner, in that you just go up to File, Plugin Extras, and then over and down to Process with DxO Pure Raw 3. And similarly, we'll get a dialog box where we'll have some options. We have a few more uh, raw processing methods here as well. You have High Quality, Prime, D prime in this new D prime XD. That's what we're going to use for this because it's a raw file and it should do the best job possible on this raw file. I am going to correct optical corrections and we have some more options here. 
there's lens softness and you have some choices. Do you want it soft, standard, strong, or hard? I'll just go with standard. Uh, do you want to correct vin vignetting? Yes. Chromatic aberration? Yes. Lens distortion? Yes. Now, when you correct for lens distortion, um, quite often there's some pixels you lose on the side. And what do you want to do? Do you want to image crop to the original ratio? Yes, I want that. You also could just go to the max maximum rectangle or the complete image area where you just include um, blank pixels. But in this case, we're going to go with the image crop to the original ratio. Now, we have an extra output format. We have uh, DNG, JPEG, and TIFF. If you remember, I believe in Pure Raw 2, we only had DNG and JPEG. But I am going to do GM, DNG again for the same exact reason. I like to preserve the raw format throughout my workflow. Uh, I'm going to go to a custom folder. Again, it's going to be that working folder. I'm not going to do anything outside of the default renaming. And then after it's done, what do you want to do? Do you want to send it to a specific piece of software? Do you want to, what do you want to do? I'm just going to leave it. Don't export after processing just like that. So we're not going to do anything. And we're just going to start processing. Now, similarly, this works in the background. So you could do things in Lightroom. Also, similarly, because I saved it to this working folder, once it's done, it is supposed to automatically import it into Lightroom. And then it's going to add it to its own collection. You see, the other collection was called DXO Pure Raw 2. It's going to create a new collection. At least it's supposed to create a new collection, uh, DXO Pure Raw 3, and be in there. Now, again, I've only found this to work about half the time. So we'll sit and wait. I may pause the video just because it sometimes takes a while. Um, I'm not sure if this, I think this is more Lightroom, not DxO causing the delay. Um, whether or not why sometimes it doesn't go in there, it's, it went in, so it worked. So now we have it in this collection, DxO Pure Raw 3. Let's go up to the working folder. Okay, this is it right here. We'll name this also, rename this also. Again, we hit the F2 key and we'll call this Pure Raw 3, okay? All right, so we have Pure Raw 3 there. We have the original raw file. Let's flip these two around. There's Pure Raw 2 and Pure Raw 3. All right, let's go to the original raw file. Let's see how good of a job each of these applications did for this image or have done for this image. Let's zoom in. Uh, let's just make sure that I block the zoom position. Nope, I haven't, so lock zoom position. Okay, so we're zoomed in. This is the original RAW file. You can see there's a considerable amount of noise. Here is the Pure RAW 2 DNG file. Let's go back there. There, you can see that did a pretty good job. All right, here's Pure RAW 3. Okay, I, it looks sharper, right? There's that one. Pure RAW 2, Pure RAW 3, Pure RAW 2, Pure Raw 3. Definitely looks sharper. Pure Raw 2, Pure Raw 3. Let's go to an area that just like would have noise in it. Let's go to the original raw file first, all right? Let's come in here. These darker areas, all right? So there's the original raw file. Here's Pure Raw 2. And here's Pure Raw 3. Pure Raw 2, Pure Raw 3. It definitely has less noise. There's Pure Raw 2, harder to see in the brighter areas, Pure Raw 3. Let's go to the dark area of the woodpecker here. All right, original raw file. Pure Raw 2, Pure Raw 3, Pure Raw 2, Pure Raw 3. All right, let's, I don't know, where else should we go? Maybe in here. Okay. There's the original raw file. There's Pure Raw 2 and Pure Raw 3. Pure Raw 2, Pure Raw 3. It definitely is sharper and it definitely reduced more of the noise. Now, whether or not it's worth upgrading for you, that's something I can't answer. Uh, you may remember, those of you that saw my introductory demo review video. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. I actually was working with the fully working free trial version of the software. I didn't purchase it yet because I wasn't sure 
if I was going to purchase it. But a lot of people mentioned that they wanted me to do more videos on it going forward. So I decided to purchase it. Now here in the United States, because I already own Pure Raw 2, the upgrade price was $79. I believe if you don't own any previous version of Pure Raw, that the actual price is $129. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a discount code for it. I hope to get one. If I ever get one, I'll have it listed in the description below this video. But um, I don't know. I really don't know if I'll be able to get one. So either way, it's, it's you know, difficult choice to make. It is better, but is it like significantly better where it's going to really revolutionize your post-processing? I'm not sure, uh, but, you know, make the decision. Let us know in the comments below if you think it's worth upgrading, whether or not you own it or not. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.